Shalom again, everybody. Ariel Bartzadok here from the Kosher Torah School, found online at www.koshertorah.com. Bringing to you today's daily lesson in the Sefer Yetzirah. Today is lesson number 68, dedicated, of course, to the safety, health, well-being, prosperity of everybody facing the trials and the tribulations that we are today. How in our society we seem to go from crisis to crisis. Ah, but are we really? Now, before we go on to understand a very, very important point from the Bible, from the book of Ecclesiastes, which states there's a time and a purpose for all things under heaven. Let's take a step out, back, however you want to call it. Let's look what's happening in the world today. We're facing crisis. We all know that. Here in the United States of America, there is social upheaval at this time. There is still a global pandemic with fears of its resurgence. Up and down, up and down. This form and that form. You should be able to recognize by this time in our lessons, patterns. When we are talking about the, in quote, secrets of the formation, which is Yetzirah in our book, we are, again, not talking about religion or spirituality or mysticism or Kabbalah. We are talking about, get this correct, reality. Reality. How do you and I know what is reality? There's only really one definition to that. And that is, of course, experience. If you want to define what is and what is not real, you're going to say, well, I see it, I hear it, I sense it, I taste it. Well, these are all, if you will, still electronic signals going to our brains. Ah, now you're going to begin to understand the Sefi Yitzirah. Why? Because remember, what is the brain? The brain is the seat of consciousness. Consciousness is the receptacle. We talked all about this as that place of the, the holy place which receives, which balances all things. We discussed this in our previous Mishnayot. Before I proceed now to Mishnah Vav, to talk about the seven planets, you have to understand what planets are and their influence. Because we're under these influences right now. And again, this is not a philosophical, religious, spiritual, even a mystical reality. It is a real reality. Look what's happening in the world today. Look at your personal life. I'm going to speak singular to you. Look what's happening. Look at you today, yesterday, the day before. Go back a year, a decade. You're going to see the patterns up and down, up and down. And if you truly take the time to self-introspect, you will draw this valid conclusion. The betterment, the accomplishments, the good things that have come to you as an individual have come from, yeah, okay, God, the universe, whatever, you. You are the one who makes things happen. Okay, sitting back, waiting for others to work for you. No, you do it. You take a situation that's in this position, and you change it into that position. And what you form, you don't really create because it's already, you know, the, the, the building blocks are already there. So you're forming new alignments with the building blocks or putting the Sefi Yitzira into application. This is what's happening in the world. Nature, whether it was in the form of a, a you know biological experiment out of some foreign country that got out of line or didn't, whatever the conspiracy theories may or may might not want to say, ultimately a virus is still part of nature, and nature takes its course. All right, we have the societal ups and downs now. This is all part of nature, consciousness. There's a time and a purpose for all things under heaven. That is the secret of the Sefi Yitzirah. And now, just in case you want to take your hand and put it on the pulse of reality, what's happening right now in domains of energy, places of 
influence, where the real decisions are happening behind the scenes, the energetic domains where both prophets, sorcerers meet, one to create light, maybe others to create darkness in that never-ending tug between the Hesed and the Din to create the Rahamim as the system moves as it is. Notice this today in our world. Notice this today in your life. What now can you do about it? And the answer, obviously, getting back to Kohelet Ecclesiastes. There is a time and a purpose for all things under heaven. You know, the whole famous, it was made famous by the uh, uh, the song back in the 1960s, all right? By the birds, I believe it was, uh, the, 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 you know, to everything, turn, 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 all right? A time to be born, a time to die. Great. One of the few hippie songs of the 60s that I liked. <laughs> yeah, I'm still old heavy metal guy. But anyway, getting back to the point here, that was the biblical expression of what we're learning now, all right? Mishnah Vav speaks of the Sheva Kifulot. Remember seven doubles. What are the seven? Remember, they are modulations along the Sephirotic channels. We've already discussed what those channels are. And I referred to you, again, as modulations. We already know the right and the left and the center. But modulations are up and down, up and down. <laughs> reminded me when I was doing the movement there of that old television, uh, that old movie uh, from the 1980s. Wasn't it 80s? Uh, the Karate Kid, you know, he said, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off, where the old Japanese master, Miyagi, was teaching the young boy, Daniel, how to study or practice, if you will, karate. And rather than give him the external you know, expression or the ideal. He taught him the internal meaning and practice. And he goes, I want you to go wax the car. I want you to go put paint on. And he taught him how to move his hand. And as he taught him how to move his hand, the hand got into the practical form of the movement. And as the hand got in the practical form of the movement, the boy, Daniel, didn't realize what the heck he was doing until Mr. Miyagi showed him that he had already studied and learned the karate. You are now studying and learning the Kabbalah in the exact same way. You don't think that it is, but it is. And that's why I gave you this analogy. The seven doubles, modulating energies, high consciousness, low consciousness, moving from Hesed to Chokhmah and Chokhmah to Hesed, moving from Bina to Gavura and Gavura to Bina, moving from Keter through Dat to Teferet, up and down. Each and every letter is a modulation. And that modulation, we refer to those old words that we learned before. Hakakan, carving. Hatsaban, engraving. Tsarafan, permutating. Shakalan, weighing. And Hamiran, all right? Mixing them up, getting things together. Tsar behem sheva kochavim ba'olam. And from all of these functions, what are these functions again? Oh, mystical, magical meditations. No, practical, realistic functioning using of your mind to recognize what something is and what it can become. Looking at things both rationally and intuitively. But you'll notice I do not say emotionally, even though these seven sefirot correspond to Human emotions, remember? The six sefirot of what we call Zerampin, the Hesed, Gavor, Teferet, Netzachol, the Yeso, these are human emotions, pretty much. Hesed and Gavor and part of Teferet are still sub, but not un, unconscious is the mind. Subconscious emotions, the emotions like the iceberg beneath the water, which influences. We need to understand our own emotions. So if you really want to understand your own inner personal dynamics, you need to explore within. Welcome to the paths. This is their contemplations, their heat bonenuts, so that you will begin to understand and realize the reality of those energies around us. And this is why they are correlated to the planets. 
The planets, okay, I'm just going to do the part about the seven kochavim, right? The seven planets. Yeah, it also says the seven days of the week and the seven gates in the soul, male and female. But, you know, I can't cover all of that right now. We don't have enough time, but we've got classes to come. God be willing. The seven planets are those which are known, or I should say visible to the human eye in antiquity. All the different cultures, the Indian, the Chinese, the, uh, the Babylonians, the, uh, the Sumerians, the Egyptians. Everybody knew the seven planets, which are Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon. And this was how they were understood to be in relationship to distance to our planet, Earth. Yes, the old astrological system was built upon a geocentric Ptolemaic understanding of cosmology. Like the old Greek, Roman, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, cosmology. Yeah, dating back thousands of years. Things have changed. You know, reality has expanded. Consciousness has grown. We no longer, uh, let me rephrase that, we are now more aware and conscious, recognizing the limitation or fallacy or limitation, I like that word better, of the geocentric model. The geocentric model, you know, where the earth is the center of the earth and every goes around it and all the planets going, that was more metaphysical, spiritual, symbolic, metaphorical than literal. And this is exactly where we apply it. Our seven paths, Begit Kaport, each one is said to correlate, to correlate metaphysically, spiritually, all right, with one of these seven planets. And as such, has and is a source of, the word that is just about to come out of my mouth, I'll say it, psychic energy. So as we will read, we're going to understand, all right, the correlations of what is the influence of Saturn? What is the influence of Jupiter? What is the influence of Mars? And not only are we going to recognize the influence of each and every planet, we're going to correlate that influence with one of the days of the week. Now, do we really associate planets today with the days of the week? Hmm. For the record, today is Sunday. Sun, 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 day. This must be Christian, right? Because sun is S-O-N, day, Sunday, day of, of Yeshu, Jesus. <laughs> no, it's S-U-N. Today's the day of the sun. Tomorrow is Monday, moon day. Look at the language of the days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Thursday, all right? All of these come from different Latin spellings and understandings of the planets. So, of course, Sunday is well, the day of the sun. Monday is the day of the moon. Tuesday is the day of Mars. Wednesday, the day of Mercury. Thursday, the day of Jupiter. Friday, the day of Venus. And Saturday is the day. Did I get that right? I, I, I think I messed that up somehow. Saturday is 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 what you call it. Yeah, no, I got it right. Saturday is 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 uh, Saturn chop type, right? So you go, sun, moon, Mars. Okay, this is the old order: Mercury, Jupiter, Mo uh, Venus, and Saturn. This is the order of the days and the planets. Each one has its influence for an hour of the day. And the days, how many hours are in the day? 12. 12 by day, 12 by night. Ah, oh, I'm jumping into the fifth chapter. So sorry. But as you will see as we go, all the foundation of Kabbalistic astrology is based upon not only knowing the monthly planets, right? It's knowing the hourly influence. I should say the monthly constellation and the hourly planet. So for example, again, Today, that I'm recording, this is a Sunday, but I'm not at the first hour of the day. Maybe I think I'm in the second or third hour of the day. So we go through the cycle. So today, at this hour, for example, 
Mars might be an ascendant in the sun in the month of the astrological influence. Now, what is all of this that I'm talking to you about? The Bible makes it very clear. If you're going to look to astrology for predictions of the future, you're wasting your time. That is the foundation of what we would call idolatry. Why? Number one, let's understand. The planets are all ordained by God. You know that right out of the Bible. Their influence, ordained by God, right out of the Bible. Their correlations, the planets, that is, to the sephirotic energies are right here in our reality. But what these correlations are expressing to us is, for lack of a better word, our psychology, personality. What do we call that again? Consciousness. You and I are different. Male and females are different. If I, the same person I am today, was a woman, not by, you know, modern day surgery, which really doesn't do anything energetically, but by birth, by choice, I myself would see things in an altered perception. Every male of the species sees things in his personality through that male lens, every female through her lens. Which lens is the right one? All right and left and center or right or wrong or somewhere in between. Perception. The force and power of the planets are potentials. They create for us patterns of personality. One of the one, one of the rabbis who actually writes about this very nicely is the famous uh, Kabbalist rabbi Moshe Chaim Luzato, young Italian upstart. Yeah, that's what he really was. He was a 20-year-old kid, clean-shaven young man, went up to the old holy rabbis of his day and says, hey, old holy rabbis, I'm talking to angels and they're channeling to me brand new Zohar. <laughs> you can imagine those poor old rabbis. <laughs> Looked like he was a lunatic. They threw him out of Italy. Get out of here, you crazy guy. And here we are, hundreds of years later, vindicated and validated as one of the greatest prophetic Kabbalistic minds of the last few centuries. Well, he writes in his book, The Way of God, Derech Hashem, explaining how these energies work. And it's a great book, and I encourage you reading it, because it'll give you some ideas to, to, to contemplate these things. So understand and note, again, The Way of God, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Luzato. I'm sure it should be available on Amazon, go, or go to the Jewish bookstores online. I have links to there on our koshatorah.com uh, link page, you can see. But anyway, getting back to the point. The planets are the influences spoken of in the book of Kohelet, time and a purpose for all things under heaven. And when you contemplate Saturn or Jupiter or the Mars and recognize their sephirotic origins, you become aware of and experience, I like that word, personality influences. Did you ever ask yourself why you are the way you are? I, you know what? Uh, this is the way I am. This is what I like. This is how I am. Why? In our meditative tradition, I'm pretty sure in Eastern Oriental traditions as well, saying stam, or that's just the way it is, is never enough. We always seek to understand ourselves. So, in my personality, no, I'm not going to say I like pizza. That's not a personality trait. In my personality, I am soft. I am hard. I am easy. I am tough. Whatever. Why? Ah, I gaze within myself as you need to gaze within yourselves. You look at the time that you were born. You look at the influence of planetary aspects, which correspond to sephirotic origins. And you begin to understand patterns of behavior amongst the sephirot and the planets and how they are reflected within you. This will not predict your future, but it will show patterns of influence that if left untouched, will needless to say, repeat themselves in a natural order. Are you limited by that natural order? 
No. To think that you are is wrong. That's why we call it idolatry. You can rise. You can ascend. And we'll learn more about that in our next class because I've run out of time today. All righty, guys. We'll keep this up. I'll give you uh, links to other courses that you can take. And I'll talk to you soon.